About a year ago, I completely revamped my hair care routine with the main goal of achieving stronger, longer hair and I've succeeded. So naturally, I am so eager to share this revamped routine with all of you. I've always noticed that a couple of months after I'd color my hair, my roots would grow about an inch and a half or even two inches. But this growth wasn't visible in the overall length. Where was it going? While my roots were sprouting, the issue laid in the ends of my hair. The hair experts have always told us these split ends needed trimming to prevent further splitting and promote hair growth. So I would get regular trims twice a year, but every trim seemed to reset my hair growth process. After a decade of regular trims and stunted growth, I quit entirely about two years ago. I quit going to the salon. So let me take you on my hair care routine. So I wash and condition my hair every three days and every seven days when I get a blowout. More on that later. The first thing I check before my hair washing ritual is, are my nails in good condition? I rarely visit nail salons, which sometimes means I have split nails. This can lead to hair damage when I run my hands through it. It's frustrating when I'm working on my hair and some strands get caught, causing it to be pulled out. So if my nails are in poor condition and I don't have a nail file, I'll actually wear a pair of latex gloves to shield my hair from any damage. Before entering the shower, I gently detangle my hair with a pick. Now, if I were to begin my wash routine with tangled hair, the entire process would be a nightmare for me. It'd be time consuming. It'd be fraught with damage if I even attempted to detangle wet hair. I found for someone with my type of hair, thick and long, it's so much easier to wash and condition it in sections. So I just part it down the middle, and work on one side at a time. I go in with Purology shampoo and conditioner. Purology products are 100% vegan friendly and animal cruelty free. And I go in heavily with that conditioner and do a deep, nice condition every time. Something I noticed a long time ago was the neglect of the back part of the hair. And this is a common oversight by many women. If it's out of sight, it's out of mind, right? So making sure the back gets as much care and conditioner as the front and sides became a vital part of my routine. I use my pick to gently comb through my hair again to really work that conditioner through every strand. And then I I put it up and go about the rest of my bath routine while the conditioner is doing its magic. I rinse with cool water, then on to drying. I overheard a woman at a salon once say she never wraps her hair in a turban towel when wet because it, it pulls the hair causing the hairline to recede. Considering how thick and heavy and tightly wrapped some towels can be, so I've been using a thin, somewhat microfiber towel. I still do the turban thing, but very lightly, and the towel is thin enough where I can feel if I'm doing any damage. I also, for the first time in my life, started to apply a leave-in conditioner. I've never done that in the past, but it is a must if you have dry hair like me and want your hair to grow. I am loving Nature Tint CC Cream Leave-In Conditioner, also forever vegan and cruelty-free. Now this next step was critical to my long hair growth. To manage and protect the ends, I crafted my own blend of high quality oils I researched online. I got them all from Amazon along with a large bottle of almond oil as like the base, a carrier oil, into which I mixed a bit of the concentrated oils into. And I began twining the oil into my hair ends every day. And it is nothing short of amazing how the split ends would react to the oil. It really gobbled it up, moisturized, and I found I had to reapply it later in the evening, time permitting. 
I used to be embarrassed of having split ends. They looked unkempt to me. I don't have them anymore because of this step. The biggest obstacle that's stopping you from growing your hair is your ends breaking off on you. The ends are the oldest, most damaged, brutal part of your hair. And because of that, they're most susceptible to breaking off. And when they do, you lose length. So if you can prevent your ends from breaking off and turning to dust, every inch of growth up here turns into an inch of growth down here. That's why my ends are loving the hair oil. It hydrates them and it seals all the moisture in. Now, I'd always let my hair air dry a bit before I put it back, but last month I started to do blowouts. I opted to never use heat protectant because the last time I used it, my guy was overblown by the toxic chemical smell. And after doing a little research, I found that stuff to contain formaldehyde. So that's something I do not want on my hair or scalp. So I found a deal at a salon by my house where you can purchase a package of blowouts. It equates to a little more than what one would pay for a Starbucks coffee every day. I've been getting like two or three blowouts a month for the past few months, but I shampoo my hair first at home myself about an hour before I hit the salon. This ensures it's sufficiently dry enough, reducing the need for like extended blowout um, drawing at the salon, and it means less damage to my hair. That's my hair washing routine and aftercare routine. Now on to protecting it from daily routines that could damage hair. For instance, my guy's habit of draping his arm over my hair in bed or over my shoulder while we're walking, I thought was causing undue stress to my ends. So I always make sure that in bed, my hair is always laid above my head the few times it's down and I'm very mindful of it while upright and around him. So, I'm like this. A satin pillowcase or bonnet is a must to avoid damage and frizz while sleeping. I also hadn't recognized that when I sat with my head um, resting against surfaces like the sofa or car seats, it's causing friction that led to hair damage. So now I'm more conscious and I make an effort to just drape my hair forward when it's down and I'm sitting preventing like the back of my hair from directly contacting these surfaces. Most of the time though, I like to keep my hair up to protect it. Now, what you put it up with is crucial to avoid damage. I was using a hair fork for the longest time until I noticed hair breakage in the crown of my head. Unacceptable. I immediately stopped using them and I went back to ponytail holders. Ugh. I loathe them for so many reasons. Even if they're satin, they still break my hair at the ends in the back right here. And I feel tension where the ponytail rests. It does nothing for my hair when I, my hairstyle when I would remove it also. And it takes too long to wash and dry them, which I do often, and they can be expensive and they get lost easily. So, ugh. I tried a lot of things before stumbling upon the clip claw. I've used them when I was much younger for achieving uh, updo hairstyle. Now I deeply rely on them to hold my hair gently up and back where I can still comfortably sleep on them. I rarely sleep with my hair down. The clip claw is so gentle on my hair. It doesn't exert pressure on the clipped area. And when I remove it a few hours later, it leaves my hair with like beautiful beautiful waves, unlike the impression and blandness a scrunchie would leave. And being made of wood or plastic, I can conveniently wash and quickly dry them for immediate use. So shockingly, a major culprit of hair damage is something we do every day, sometimes twice a day, without even realizing it. 
It is the simple act of dressing. The friction between my hair and clothes during dressing and undressing causes considerable stress on the ends, especially with tight fitting clothes like turtlenecks. So to prevent this, I keep a plastic bag in my closet, which I place over my head. Children don't do this at home. Plus it's really good for keeping the makeup off your clothes when you're dressing, if you have that bag on you. And I always protect my hair from damage from the sun. And lastly, I'd like to stress the importance of nutrition for hair health and hair growth. While external products can help, if your diet is inadequate, your hair's condition will reflect that. Therefore, it's vital to incorporate nutrient-dense foods into your diet, like healthy fats, proteins, minerals from the sea, vegetables, and collagen-rich foods like sea moss. I eat two tablespoons of sea moss every day, and I can tell it's having great results on my hair and skin and nails externally. So those are the hair secrets I have been accumulating for the past few months and I have been so eager to share with you all. If you guys have any tips or tricks, please, I hope you leave them in the comments below so that we can all benefit from each other. I hope you found this video insightful. I hope you liked the video and goodbye.